How to play Ash versus Evil Dead Ash. Old Man Ash, or Lash, as some people like to call him. Let's hop right into it. Let's check out his abilities first. Uh, the first one is Show Up and Blow Up. It's an active skill that generates an explosion. It damages enemies' balance bars. Uh, it's on a 30-second cooldown, and it has a very small radius of 4 meters. This is actually uh, much better than you'd think. It doesn't tell you anything about what kind of balance bar damage it does, but it is fairly significant. And it is actually the ability that makes Lash one of the best characters at the moment because of the way the meta is at the moment this video was made. Uh, the meta right now for demons is basic early or early basic unit possessions. And he is really good at using his Q in order to get that balance bar up, stun them, and then wail on them and finish them off. The so show up and blow up is very good for that. For the most part, I would say you want to save it for those basic early unit possessions. And this is a very uh, good ability. The second ability is El Jefe, which is his aura that all leaders have. His aura makes it so that everyone within range gets a 10% damage boost to all damage they inflict, ranged and melee. And then he gets 20% fear resistance to everybody as well. Um, and I believe that that also includes himself, by the way. <laughs> so the 20% fear resistance and the 10% damage also infects himself. And because leaders already have built-in fear resistance, that makes him absurd. And I'll get into, well, I'll just tell you now. It would appear that there's something bugged with Ash versus Evil Dead Ash here, where once his in-game fear resistance is maxed, he literally loses fear when he gets jump scared <laughs> so if 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 the demon jump scares you his fear goes down i don't know why that happens i don't know if it's a bug or what it sure seems like one but basically once he gets his fear in game maxed out he basically cannot get possessed ever again for the rest of the match which is really insane uh his third ability is old friend he starts the match with a chainsaw this is an okay ability the chainsaw is a great weapon, so that's good at least. The only problem is, is I'd say typically you want to drop the chainsaw for like a sledgehammer because the big thing that you really want to go for on Lash is his balance bar uh, damage. Uh, that's the biggest thing with him because you really want to contribute to show up and blow up. And if anyone has balance bar resistance, you're going to want to use show up and blow up and then have a sledgehammer, which is going to deal more balance bar damage than the chainsaw will and get them uh, stunned much faster. But otherwise it's a it's great because then it means you don't wind up getting stuck early game with a bad weapon where you can't find loot. And again, with early game basic unit possession, if the demon finds you right away, you at least have a good weapon to protect yourself with. So it's a decent enough ability. His level 25 is El Jefe Grande, which enhances his aura effects. When he performs a finisher or dismembers an enemy, uh, it's mostly going to be finishers that you're going to get this from in early game You'll also get some from your chainsaw thanks to uh, its high dismemberment uh, El Jefe Grande is great 100% improvement on his effects, which is the 10% damage and 20% damage uh, Fear or 20% fear resistance Which ultimately translates to if you're good at basic math now anytime he performs an execution or dismembers someone he, gets, he gives everyone, including himself, a 20% damage increase and a 40% fear resistance. So that's very, very good. El Jefe Grande is an excellent ability. Um, as far as his perks go, this is an interesting one. I've changed my mind a lot since I made my Aninobi video because I've done a little bit more testing. I've done a little bit more math. I've read a few more comments on YouTube about how cer certain things work and how they interact with one another. And I think this is a better build than probably what I put on Annie Nobi. And it's also gonna be a little different because of how uh, Lash's abilities work. First, I'd put two points into Great Influence. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this is because uh, you're really deciding between Great Influence and Cardio. So you're deciding bef between a two meter extra distance on your aura effect range or a 5% stamina cost reduction in sprinting. Both of those are pretty negligible increases, but you really don't care about a 5% increase on, you know, 
sprinting. That's really irrelevant because you're never really going to be sprinting in combat. So you don't really need that 5% extra sprint, which isn't going to make a huge difference. I think a two meter difference on your aura still doesn't, isn't, isn't a huge deal, but it could be the difference between saving somebody's life or not, because it could be if you only have eight meters and somebody's just outside of that, you know, those two meters can make the difference between them getting scared and possessed or not getting scared and possessed. Uh, I don't think you need to put any more points in great influence. Um, it's not enough a dif difference to warrant it. I don't think you need that big of an aura effect range because for the most part, as an extra 10 meters, it's going to be big enough that it's going to affect anybody at points in the game where it matters, such as the dagger step or the lost pages. Your aura is going to be so big, everybody's going to be inside it while you're protecting those objectives. So I don't think you really need to make it any bigger than that. And the only reason you're really even putting in a second point in it anyway is because you have to in order to get down here and reach these perks. After that, I would put two points into Artful Dodger and three points into Maximum Health. I don't think it's necessarily ideal to put all these points in here, but they're your best options uh, for points until you can get access to the level four perks. Um, so taking 20% health increase, it'll make you a little tankier. That's always good. And then obviously Artful Dodger, 15 and 20% stamina cost reduction is very, very good. You especially always want to put at least one point in this because going from zero to a 15% extra stamina is excellent. Um, yeah, you, you want that because leaders don't have great stamina. They're not as bad as warriors, but they don't have great stamina. So this does make a difference and will let you dodge a little more often in combat, which is a big deal. After that, I like to go down here and max out everything related to melee. You especially want all three points into seeing stars. Balance bar damage is your bread and butter as Lash. It's what his entire kit and character is all about is that balance bar damage. That's what you're gonna be doing with him is helping your team with balance bar damage. Get that up to three points because it goes from 10 and then 15 to 25. So that last increase is a big 10% increase, which makes maxing it out worth it. The last one is, or, or the next one is Devastating Force. Put all four points into this. 15% extra damage is great. Um, yeah, there's not much more to say. You need extra melee damage or else you're just gonna be tickling the enemy. You can get their balance bar damage or get their balance bar completely full and stun them, but it doesn't matter if you can't do any damage to them. So you wanna be able to chip in at least a little bit. And then the last word um, is excellent. 50% damage increase on your last combo. Lash doesn't need to use heavies like a, a couple of other characters I've done videos on recently. So he is gonna be hitting the last hit in his combo fairly frequently because you're gonna be wailing on people with light attacks. So this is worth putting all your points into is a 50% damage increase is fairly significant. I would then put two points into stopping power because again, he really wants to go all in on balance bar damage. That's his bread and butter. 10% uh, to 15%. Yeah, it's only a 5% increase, um, but I still think it's probably worth it. Then after that, you have five points left over. I'd put three more into hollow points, get that all the way up to 25%, and then two into wig splitter. If you really want, you could take one point out of stopping power, and then, so then that way you can max out wig splitter. Kind of just depends on how much you think you'll need balance bar damage for, how much you like using guns, and how frequently you can hit headshots. The reason I like going into this is because then you can be one of those few characters in the game that is kind of good at both. Warriors, you basically want to exclusively use melee. Hunters, you want to exclusively use ranged. Supports suck at everything, so it really doesn't matter what you do. They don't really get too many damage increases. They're just about keeping their team alive. So by doing this, it kind of makes you decent, not great at both things. And so then you can kind of play differently and whatever ammo type your hunter is not using, go ahead and use it. And then you can kind of mix in a melee, pull out a shotgun, blast them, do big balance bar damage. That's a really good combo. So that's what I would recommend is taking all those perk points. As far as perks, 
that we're not taking, you may be asking, hey, why aren't you taking Master of Influence? It's a 20% aura effect improvement. A lot of people might think this is a no brainer. Take this on every leader. Uh, you shouldn't, if there actually, if there is one character that you might think about taking it on, it's Leader Ash because of the fact that he, ha that he has El Jefe Grande, which increases his aura effects by 100%. And the greater the value, the greater the benefit you're gonna get out of these small percentages. But even still, if you look at this, he only gives a 10% damage increase and 20% fear resistance. So ultimately what that translates to is if you max this out, which takes four points on its own, plus you gotta work at least three points just to get over there. So in total, it's uh, seven points just to max this out. You're leaving behind a lot of damage in order just to max this out. And ultimately what it results in is a 2% damage increase to his aura and a 4% increase to fear resistance. That doesn't sound worth it. Well, you might be saying, well, what about El Jefe Grande? El Jefe Grande doubles that. Well, now the damage becomes what? 24% increased everybody, an extra 4%. And your fear increase goes to 48%, an extra 8%. Now the 8% is iffy. You might say, well, 8% is pretty good. Maybe that's worth it. I don't think it's worth seven ability points. Even at 40%, you're gonna be giving people so much fear resistance. I don't think 8% is gonna make or break you, especially not for the cost of seven perk points. It's just not worth it in my opinion. I would not take that. As far as these other ones go, uh, the amulet stuff is just not a big enough increase to justify taking, in my opinion. It's only a 3% increase with one point, perk point, and then a 2% with a second perk point. On both of these, it's just not enough. Leaders aren't really meant to be tanks anyway. That's kind of your role for your warrior, if that's what they want to spec into. You're not really there to be taking a bunch of shots. Um, and anyway, if you want to take more shots, this is way better anyway because the 10 percent increase and then it goes up by five the next two levels so industrial strength is what you want to use anyway cardio i wouldn't upgrade at all because it's only a 10 percent increase in sprinting you don't really care about sprinting um quicker cooldown doesn't really matter because he only has a 30 second cooldown anyway so if you max that out it only makes it a 27 second cooldown two perk points in order to give him three more, three less seconds on his cooldown. That's not worth it. Deep pockets, I don't think matters on him because he doesn't care about ranged as much as Annie does. And it's just not worth investing into. And truth be told, I would probably not even put this on Annie anymore if I were to redo that video. Uh, none of this stuff matters. The, the rest of this is junk. You don't need more fear resistance on Lash. As I said, his fear resistance is already disgusting. <laughs> You definitely don't need that. Tougher than hell, again, not a big enough increase to justify going over there. It's only 3%, and then level 2 is a 2% increase from that. Not worth it. Um, there may be something to be said in a future video about going all in on reducing the duration timer for objective events. If you were playing with a group of people and you were all stacking these, that could be something, a meme build that you could run with a group of friends. There's potential there especially if you come across here and uh, grab these things so you can get Master of Influence if you really believe in it, and then you can max out fast forward potentially. I can still help, doesn't matter. Um, you shouldn't be dying anyway. <laughs> Echoes of the Aura doesn't really matter. Seven seconds, you, get, you should be next to your team at all times anyway. Don't ever take extra matchsticks, good Lord, <laughs> unless you're... Unless for some reason you want to come over here and get these perks, which in my opinion, you shouldn't. So yeah, that's really it. <clears throat> I wouldn't recommend any of those. As far as pick F upgrades go, um, I think that the pink F, pink F upgrades are fairly obvious in terms of what you want to take. And I've spent a lot of time talking about Leader Ash. You wouldn't think that it would warrant talking about him this much, but he's got a lot going on with him. He's got a lot of things going on with him. Now, as far as pick up F upgrades go, I think the most obvious one that you want to max out is fear. And as a general rule, I would say that the level five upgrade 
for every single character in this game does something ridiculous. And generally speaking, you want to take whatever category has a level 5 upgrade first, because whatever the level 5 upgrade is, is disgusting. In this case, you definitely want to take 5 fear resistance, because it basically means 50% fear reduction, plus minus 2 fear per second in well-lit areas. You're never going to get possessed again for the rest of the match. You max out fear, you will never ever get possessed. That's a big deal. Max that out first. Um, after that, you have a lot of options. This is one of those characters where, like, you can't go wrong with anything, really. It just depends on how the match is going. Um, if you have supports who are playing really well, take take shield first. Um, you should always take fear first, but this is, I'm talking about what you take next. If you have supports who are doing a great job of feeding you shields by using amulets next to you, take shields first. Um, if you're in a situation where you don't have a good support and the other side, the demon player, is spamming early basic unit possessions, take stamina first because you're going to need that ability to dodge so that they don't chunk you for as much damage. <clears throat> um, I probably would take health last just because plus 100 max health is not that important. Um, if you find a gun that has a low reload speed but is a good gun like a blunderbuss, uh, you could potentially upgrade ranged first because you are specced in if you follow my guide into ranged and melee so you can really use both but if you find a blunderbuss you may want to go with this first just so you can get that 15 percent reload speed reduction to make that a little less painful and then of course melee <clears throat> also great because you get 12 percent melee damage and five percent attack speed that attack speed can be very important for breaking someone's balance bar in time before they're able to get a hit off on you. So really, take fear first. Uh, take either stamina or shield second, depending on how the match is going. And then after that, take melee or ranged third, depending on how the match is going and if you find a good ranged weapon that warrants it or not. And then take health last. That's the approach I would take. As far as how to play him, it's just like any other leader character. You want to stay close to your team as much as you can. Really give them the benefits of your aura. Like you can see in this video, his aura is pretty big and is going to cover most of the lost pages. Um, so in my opinion, you typically don't have to upgrade the aura range as much. Um, you're going to save your Q for when the basic unit possession comes out. That's pretty much it. Uh, it really any possession. The only possession you wouldn't use it on is a teammate. You don't really, they don't have a balance bar. So there's no balance bar to stagger. Don't use it on them. For the most part though, you do want to save it for uh, possessions on units, whether that's a basic unit that's been possessed. You can see right there that my, my fear meter actually went down after that jump scare, which is absurd. So yeah, you want to save your Q for situations like this. Um, you also want to save it for possessed elites, and you can also save it for possessed bosses. So those are the best times to be using your Q. Um, it, once you have El Jefe Grande unlocked, if you're using a weapon that has high dismemberment, in this case, I have a purple ax, go ahead and just swing away and you'll probably get tons of dismemberments and get that bonus of El Jefe Grande. Otherwise, you do want to spam finishers quite a bit. Finishers are strong just by themselves, even without that bonus. But because the animation will take so long, it'll give you those big benefits um, for quite a bit longer. So just go ahead and spam finishers with him as much as you possibly can. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. That's pretty much it. I, I really, I, I'm not sure what else you really need to do with him. Those are the basics. Don't forget that for, um, oh, we'll go into, I, I forgot, to, I talked about how to play him without mentioning freaking what weapons to pick up. I always forget about that. Uh, ranged weapons, as far as what you want to grab for that, pick up whatever your hunter's not using first and foremost. If your hunter's not using a special weapon, get that blunderbuss, especially if it's a necromancer. You're going to hear me mention this in all these videos from now on. Blunderbuss, hunting rifle, those high damage, gr great range weapons are excellent against the Necro because then it allows you to be on 
Flautus sniping duty. As soon as the Flautus comes out, you can figure out where they are and snipe them and one-shot them as long as they're not, like, upgraded. So that's really, really good. Um, otherwise, just take the scraps of whatever your hunters don't want. I would also highly recommend that you get second priority on ranged weapons after the hunters. Don't let warriors steal stuff from you. Uh, Annie would get priority over you for a ranged weapon. But other than that, um, don't let warriors steal stuff from you. Don't let support steal stuff from you. Don't let Arthur uh, take ranged weapons from you. You should get it before he does. Um, <clears throat> as far as melee weapons go, your starting chainsaw is great. Roll with that for as long as you want. The only thing that I would swap the starting chainsaw out with is either the sledgehammer, which is your top priority. Always take the sledgehammer first above everything else because of that big balance bar damage. And then I would also take uh, the axe, the big axe, not the hand axe, but the big axe, fire axe. That's another good one. Um, I would only take that, though, over a sledgehammer if the axe had a higher rarity. That's the only time I would really take it. At that point, you're trading off enough damage and dismemberment and not as much balance bar to where you can take the higher rarity axe. Otherwise, Sledgehammer gets top priority. So yeah, this is how to play Leader Ash. He's a very good character. Unlike Scotty, um, I do think I was a little wrong about him. I judged him a little too harshly. I still don't think he's amazing or anything. Um, he's not top tier, but he is very good. He, I also think, is arguably better than Annie as a leader, especially with Annie's abilities being bugged right now at the time of this video being made. Maybe it'll be patched by the time this video comes out. I'm not sure. But he's very good and maybe better than where I placed him, unlike Scotty, who is just as bad as I said he was <laughs> after having played Scotty quite a bit. So yeah, this is how you play Leader Ash. Uh, I hope this video helps you. If you have any uh, comments or questions, let me know. Uh, if you have any tips that you want to give on ways to play Leader Ash and the most efficient way to play him, let me know that as well, because anytime somebody gives me a tip, it can help. And I think we're all here to learn and get better at this game and teach each other how to be better at Evil Dead. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.